I hope you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about, again, I wake up to so many different messages every single day. And while some are on, you know, happiness, some are on cancer, I think the most frequent question revolves around belly fat. How do I lose belly fat? Okay, but <clears throat> losing belly fat is multifactorial. A lot of our problems today can be <clears throat> sorted with the way that we eat. Of course, your sleep is important. The way you think, your emotional wellness, your exercise, all of that is important. I've spoken about this topic before, but I'm going to do it again. Because from the time I spoke about this till now, I think if I had to count, there are tens of thousands of people who have followed this technique, okay, and it's working brilliantly for them. At the same time, a lot of people follow this technique and it started to work for them, but because their lives changed, some of them went back to work after the pandemic, travel started, they couldn't maintain it. So today we're gonna to go over this simple technique, okay? While losing belly fat is dependent on your hormonal balance, your sleep, your emotional wellness, all of these things, your sugar intake, everything else. What you need to understand is hunger. Have you ever thought about hunger? We look at hunger as a negative thing. We think of people who are starving, people who don't have food to eat, all of that, absolutely right, they're hungry, okay? Have you understood about the emotion and the feeling that comes with hunger? Okay, like I always keep telling you all, your body is constantly speaking to you. It's telling you what to do. It's telling you that you shouldn't be in that relationship. It's telling you that this person isn't right for me. It's telling you, it's warning you that don't say that, don't do this. But we don't listen. Most of the times, we can't hear that silent voice from our body because our minds are chaotic. We're constantly thinking, we're not mindful, we're moving on from one thing to another. We've lost the ability to just sit down and be, relax, listen, connect. Connect with your inner voice that is always speaking to you. You already know why you're struggling with your weight. You know, you know the things that you need to stop doing. You know the things that you need to start doing. You already know why there are problems in your relationship. You know what needs to change. You know what you need to do, the decisions, the choices you have to make. So like I said, there is a knowing. But now when it comes back to the technique I'm talking about today, it's a very simple thing, okay? How many of you, and I want you to reflect on this right now, how many of you eat only when you've got a signal of hunger? When you ate your breakfast today, if you ate, were you hungry? When you eat your lunch today, are you gonna eat it because you're hungry? or it's lunchtime. When you have your dinner tonight, is it because you're hungry or because it's dinner time? Now, of course, because of our schedules and work and life, we've put ourselves in a timetable. Okay, it's the same thing in schools. Most kids may not even be hungry when it's lunchtime, but it's lunchtime and they gotta eat. My point is, if you've been struggling with your health for the longest time, maybe you gotta allow the intelligence of your body to take over. And for that, you gotta listen. What if you try this for the next couple of days? Start with one day, let's not talk about the next couple of days. Only eat when you are physically hungry. Now for that, you gotta be mindful enough to know that you're not emotionally hungry. You're not eating because you're sad, you're not eating because you're bored, you're not eating because you're happy, you are eating because you have that rumbling in your stomach and that gnawing and you know, wow, I'm physically hungry. That is the time, think of it this way, there's very simple science involved with this. Your body is now asking you for nutrition, whether it's for energy, repair, rejuvenation, for your heart, for your brain, for your lung, your liver. Your body knows when it needs nutrition. It asks for it. It's controlled by hormones. Your ghrelin, a hormone that communicates hunger, will automatically go up. You'll feel hungry, telling you to eat. Now, if you reflect by now, you would have reflected and you would have realized that most of us are eating when we've not even got the signal of hunger yet. Now, how you fit this technique into your day, it's up to you because a lot of you will be pilots, some of you will be working night shifts, some of you will be scientists, some of you will be moms who are feeding. It's gonna be different, but figure it. Where there's a will, there's a way. Try this. Wait until you get hungry. It could be lunchtime, you're not hungry. Don't eat today, don't eat. Wait till you're hungry and when you get that feeling of hunger, wait another 10 minutes. Sometimes the feeling passes away because sometimes we get hungry according to a clock. Your body's used to you eating at a particular time. Wait for 10 minutes. If the feeling passes away, great. Wait until you're hungry again. If the feeling doesn't pass away, eat. 
Now when you eat, there's more magic. Okay, your body is ready to receive nutrients, nutrition, whatever it is, it's ready, it's on alert. Your immune system's on alert. Your immune system is always on alert when you're eating food. Just in case you've ingested a poison or something else, your immune system you know, wakes, is on alert to save your life. But the beauty is when you're not hungry, all of these functions, you don't have the right stomach acid, the enzymes aren't produced, which is why a lot of people that eat when they're not hungry suffer from indigestion because you don't have the right digestive enzymes to help you break it down. Now, when you do this, like I said, tens of thousands of people have done this from the time we spoke about this. This would have been somewhere in November where I did this video from an airport because I was hungry and I decided, let me explode this hunger. And I waited for 10 minutes and I didn't eat until I landed three, hour, three and a half hours later in Dubai and I was still not hungry. And then I finally ate when I was really hungry. I enjoyed my meal, I felt light, I didn't have to think about calories, I didn't have to think about anything because my body was like a sponge waiting to receive all the nutrients that we need. But when we're eating, when, we've not even, when we're not even hungry, we're putting digestive pressure on our digestive system. So I want you to try this. Now, of course, if you're a sick patient, you're going through treatment, you have to take your medication with your food, all of that, please make an informed decision. For everyone else, two things are gonna happen. Your cravings for sugar are gonna disappear. Your cravings for caffeine is also gonna disappear. I was a little upset with that because I enjoy my one cup of coffee, but that craving disappeared too. So then I had to actually force myself to have that coffee because I'm having coffee because I enjoy a good bean. But the craving went away completely. You will find that you're more energetic. All of a sudden you realize how much more you've eaten in your life when you were not hungry. So what happens? People who are struggling with fat, you start to burn this fat for energy. It works beautifully. Do not starve yourself. There's a big difference between starving. Now, if you're hungry and your body's telling you, telling you to eat, but you're still prolonging it, you're starving. Starving's gonna do the opposite. It's gonna cripple your metabolism. You're gonna put on more fat. You're gonna have indigestion, acidity, and everything else. Now, for a lot of people who are acidic, you may find that the moment you get hungry, you will also, also get acidic. That's why sometimes you're told to eat every two, three hours, but that's never gonna solve your problem. So sometimes go through that. The first time, the acidity will be there. The second time, the acidity will disappear. So you just gotta bear with that discomfort for a bit. If you're highly, highly acidic, this is not for you. First fix your acidity, and then you can go back to respecting hunger. So I want you to try this because a beautiful teacher is self-realization. You can watch all the content in the world and wonder if it's gonna work for you. Self-realization is when you do it. So try it, what do you have to lose? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Either you're gonna be successful or you're not gonna be successful. But self-realization will try. So there's a point and there's something else I have to warn you about. Sometimes your body can get used to eating less. That's what happened to me. After a while from three meals, I went to two meals. From two meals, I went to one meal full energy, but then I started losing muscle and all of that stuff and I don't want to. So I went to back, I went back to two meals because your body can also get very used to what you train it for. And the second thing is I'm always worried about micronutrients. How do I get all of my micronutrients into one meal if I'm having one meal a day? So you may lose a lot of weight, but you're going to have bigger problems because you have deficiencies of micronutrients. So I prefer to have my food maybe in two or even three meals, but wait until I'm hungry. Specifically, this will also teach you something about yourself. If you're constantly having sugar foods and carb foods, you're gonna find yourself getting hungry in one hour and two hours. That's because of your glucose spike and your crash. You're not really hungry. You're hungry because of the glucose crash and that's gonna teach you to change the way you eat. Move from high carb meals to quality carb meals or low carb meals, whatever suits you. So try this, that's your homework. If it works for you, great. It works for most people. The negatives I've got about this are a few people that look very acidic, it may be more acidic. Of course, don't do it. Don't do it if it's making you too acidic. But for everyone else, just try it. You only learn about the beauty of yourself when you try things. Everyone talks about, oh, Luke, is meditation good? I'm like, why don't you try it and decide for yourself? Oh, Luke, is waking up at five in the morning? Great, wake up at five and see if it's great for you. Luke, should I sleep seven to eight hours? Luke, sleep for seven hours, sleep for eight hours, and you decide what's better for you. Self-realization comes with you doing it. So it's very simple. Your next meal is only when you are really physically hungry. Wait for 10 minutes, the feeling passes, don't eat. 
The feeling continues, please enjoy your meal. Eat it slow, eat it with grace, bless your food, and then wait and see when you get hungry next. The human body is incredible. So what you're doing by doing this is actually building fasting intervals, natural fasting intervals between your meals. You're not putting yourself into a box of 16, eight. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not like, uh, you're a human being, physiology, biology, chemistry. You can't put yourself into a box and expect to get the same results that everyone doing a 16 eight is gonna get. By doing this, you don't even have to think about fasting because you're building mini fasting cycles between your meal and your next meal based on your body's intelligence telling you when you are ready for your next meal. Have a great day, everyone. And if you try this, I am looking forward to your feedback, to hearing how it works for you. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember you care is all about you.